Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. My name is Jim White and I'm going to be doing a half an hour messy presentation. Glad that you're here as people join in. I am coming to you from sunny California and uh, as we're waiting for folks to start, I thought I would begin with some, since this is St. Patrick's Day, some St. Patrick's Day jokes. Uh, got them from the internet. They are fresh off of my printer. Here we go. <clears throat> Why do people wear shamrocks on St. Patrick's Day? Because real rocks are way too heavy. All right, uh, let's see. Why shouldn't you iron a four-leaf clover? Because you don't want to press your luck. Don't hang up yet. Don't end like that. There's a lot better content coming than these jokes, but I got a few more as we're waiting for people to, to join in. Uh, why did St. Patrick drive the snakes out of Ireland? Well, because it was too expensive for them to fly and too long to walk. We're going to come back to the snakes in a little bit. Uh, let's see. What type of music do leprechauns enjoy? Sham, rock, and roll. Oh, baby. That's right. If you're just joining in, welcome, welcome. My name is Jim White. I'm going to be leading a 30-minute Facebook Live session um, on how to create PowerPoint games for how to create and use PowerPoint games for the beginning of Messy Church gatherings and to just sort of uh, wait as people come on. I'm, I'm uh, sharing some fabulous St. Patrick's Day jokes, or maybe not so fabulous, depending on what you think. Here we go. When does a leprechaun cross the road? Well, when the light turns green, of course. Uh, how old are leprechauns? This is a good one. They are so old that they still remember when rainbows were black and white. Uh, two more, two more. When is a potato from Ireland not an Irish potato? Well, probably when it's a French fry. And finally, I don't know if this is the best or the worst. How do you know an Irish person is having fun? When they're doubling over with laughter. All right. As I said, the quality of these jokes do not uh, predicate the quality of what's coming in just a moment. So glad that you're here with us. Um, we're going to begin. Actually, let me tell you a little about myself. My name is Jim White. I'm a pastor, United Methodist pastor uh, in Palmdale, California. Palmdale is in the high desert, about 45 minutes north, northeast of Los Angeles airport. I am in my sixth year as pastor here. My first 21 years of ministry, I served in the islands of Hawaii. That's where I went to high school and college. That's my Aloha shirt. I'm wearing it green for St. Patrick's Day. And I've been involved with Messy Church probably close to 10 years or so. I first started at our church in Iaea on the, on the uh, island of Oahu. And then when we came to Palmdale, they had already had a Messy Church going and I just kept it as well. I'm also serving on the Messy Church USA Board of Directors uh, and my friend, uh, Roberta is also with me today. She's going to be checking the chat. And so if you have any questions, uh, Roberta, Eg Roberta Egley, she's the executive director for Messy Church USA, and she'll be making sure that I get the questions so that we can respond to the end. Um, let me pray and light a candle, and then we'll get started. Thank you, God, so much for bringing us here this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever it is that we're watching this um, either live or on demand. We thank you so much uh, for your church, and especially the church that goes outside the walls of our traditional uh, buildings. We thank you for messy churches all over the world, for men, women, and children who have hearts uh, to reach out and share the love of Jesus with people that are hungry. And so we thank you for this time we have together. May we be open to whatever it is you wanna say to us through this uh, fun session. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So as is to tradition, I will be lighting a candle as a reminder that the presence of God is with us in all that we do.
And sometimes you got to light a candle twice, which is what we're doing right now. All right. There we go. So let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing um, for the next 25 minutes or so. Um, one of the things I started doing back in IAEA, and I've carried it over to Palmdale, is creating these PowerPoint games uh, that we can do at the very beginning. Oh, I forgot I'm supposed to say check in from, let us know where you're watching this from uh, so that we know kind of where everybody is, is uh, seeing this. Uh, anyway, I do these PowerPoint games. We have, you know, at the beginning of the Messy Church um, gatherings, people are checking in and there's some, probably some different puzzles and games and things for people to do. Well, we found that uh, a fun way of sort of focusing people on the theme, we invited them when we were doing in person, we invited them to come into the sanctuary and you can sit in with your family or you can sit with your friends um, and move around and we're going to play a PowerPoint game together. And everyone needs something to write on and something to write with. So why don't you grab that right now? Paper, pen, you could use your phone and open up a notes page, just something that you could, and number one through 10. And we're going to be doing this PowerPoint game together. And then when the game is done, I'm going to talk you through kind of how we use it and some of the fun things um, that go along with that. So without further ado, let us move on to our PowerPoint game. All right. So this is a St. Patrick's Day quiz, Messy Church edition. Now, some of you may be from, uh, if you're watching from the UK, you probably know a lot of this. It was new to me, did a bunch of research. Hopefully you'll, it's something that you'll find fun. Uh, number one through 10, and all of them are multiple choice. So uh, feel free to put whatever uh, answer you want. Question number one, where was St. Patrick born? A, England, B, Ireland, C, Wales, D, none of the above. All right, so make your little uh, answer. I, used, I usually tell the families when they're doing this, you have to put something down and we'll have, you know, if it's a whole family working together or if it's a bunch of kids that have friends that have gotten together, we have them, you know, poll each other and decide which answer they're going to go with as their final answer for their team. So where was St. Patrick born? England, Ireland, Wales, none of the above. Question number two, what type of snakes did Patrick drive out of Ireland? B, grass snake, A, B, adders, C, smooth snakes, D, none of the above. Uh, feel free to use the artwork at the bottom of the picture to help with your answer if you so choose. What type of snakes did Patrick drive out of Ireland? Grass snakes, adders, smooth snakes, none of the above. Moving on to question number three. What was the shamrock originally called? A, trifolium, B, young clover, C, uh, Simbrock, D, none of the above. And pardon my really bad Irish attempt at an Irish accent on that one. Trifolium, Young Clover, Simrock, none of the above. Still with me? Here we go. Number four. What year did the first St. Patrick's Day parade start in the United States? Sorry, I don't know about other world things, but we're going with the U.S. since that's where I'm from. A, 1601. B, 1737, C, 1762, D, none of the above. You're beginning to sense a pattern. There will be a none of the above uh, choice for all of these. 1601, 1737, 1762. See how well you know your American history. Number five, what was the traditional St. Patrick's Day meal in Ireland? A, corned beef and potatoes. B, corned beef and cabbage. C, ham and cabbage. D, none of the above. So if you think it's bangers and mash, hit D, none of the above. Number six. What color was originally associated with the St. Patrick's Day holiday? Was it A, orange, B, blue, C, green, D, none of the above? Come to think of it, C, green is also a color, isn't it? But this is the number, the letter C, green as your option. Orange, blue, green, none of the above. We're over halfway there. Number seven. 
In addition to hops, yeast, and water, what additional ingredient is in Guinness beer? Would that be A, barley, B, wheat, C, rye, D, none of the above? A, barley, B, wheat, C, rye, D, none of the above. You, you got to have Guinness as part of a St. Patrick's Day uh, quiz, don't you think? Okay, let us move to question number eight. Close out my email so I'm keep getting these announcements. Number eight, what percentage of Americans are of Irish descent? Would it be A, 3%, B, 5%, C, 10%, D, none of the above? What percentage of Americans claim to be of Irish descent? 3%, 5%, 10%, none of the above. You know, we are the melting pot nation, I guess. All right. Number nine, just two questions left. Here we go. What are the odds of finding a four-leaf clover? Now, it doesn't say whether it's in Ireland or outside of Ireland, so we'll just say anywhere in your, wherever you tend to be, wherever they have clover in your neck of the woods. A, one in a hundred. B, one in a thousand. C, one in a million. D, none of the above. One in a hundred, one in a thousand, one in a million. D, none of the above. If you just joined us, we're doing a PowerPoint slideshow. I'm showing, uh, we're going to be showing how you can use this at the beginning of Messy Church. And we're just finishing up 10 questions on St. Patrick's Day. Number 10, when was St. Patrick canonized? When was he officially made a saint by the Roman Catholic Church? Would it have been A, in the 5th century, B, in the 12th century, C, in the 17th century, or D, you guessed it, None of the above. All right, 5th century, 12th century, 17th century, none of the above. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are now going to go with the answers and no writing in the answers. If you just did one, Jesus is watching you, okay? Here we go. Now, if I was doing this at uh, a messy church, um, we would do just like this. I would read the question, where was St. Patrick born? A, England, B, Ireland, C, Wales, D, none of the above. And I would, as I said each one, I would have the groups raise their hand, okay? So what is, what did your group decide? And if you want, you can type it into the chat um, just to see what your ideas are compared to um, what others. Uh, A, England, B, Ireland, C, Wales, D, none above. The correct answer is, drum roll please, England. Yes, uh, I think he was hoodwinked or kidnapped and taken uh, from Britain up, or from England up into Ireland. Number two, uh, what types of snakes did St. Patrick drive out of Ireland? Uh, grass snake, adders, smooth snake, smooth snakes, none of the above. Again, we would go around and see where, which group did what, and as we go along, I'd be asking, all right, how many people have at least two points, three points, and we'd Keep track as, as the day goes by or as the game goes by. Uh, go ahead and put your answer in the chat. The correct answer, of course, is D, none of the above. That's right. Uh, according to everything I read on the internet, uh, snakes never occupied Ireland to begin with. It just became part of the lore. Maybe that's why there are no snakes in Ireland, because there never was. Anyway, we're grateful for whatever role St. Patrick did or didn't have with the snakes. Number three, what was the shamrock originally called? A, trifolium, B, young clover, C, semrock, D, none of the above. Type it in the chat. Let us know what you put. The correct answer is sim simrock. Now, technically, trifolium is the uh, Latin name for uh, a shamrock, and shamrock, shamrock is, uh, is the Irish for young clover. So I guess you could potentially have a point no matter what you picked, except for D, none of the above, zero points if you picked that. Uh, but the real answer we're looking for was C, Semrak. Number four, what year did the first St. Patrick's Day parade start in the United States? A, 1601, B, 1737, C, 1762. Type it in the chat or D, none of the above. Of course, we became... Uh, we became independent from England, no offense, uh, Miss Lucy and the rest of you, uh, in 1776, 
But the re first answer is actually correct. A, 1601. In, on March 17, 1601, in a Spanish colony in what is now St. Augustine's, Florida, was the very first St. Patrick's Day parade on record. Who knew? Number five, what was the traditional St. Patrick's Day meal in Ireland? Corned beef and potatoes, corned beef and cabbage, ham and cabbage, none of the above. The correct answer is ham and cabbage. And then when the immigrants came to the United States, uh, they couldn't afford, many of them couldn't afford the ham, and so corned beef became a uh, economical alternative. Uh, I wonder if corned beef and cabbage is what they eat in Ireland now, or if they're still with the ham and cabbage. Type it in the chat if you know. Number six, what color was originally associated with this holiday? Orange, blue, green, or none of the above? It seems like green is a no-brainer, yes, but cr actually the correct answer is blue. That's right, blue. Uh, the 5th century saint's official color was St. Patrick blue, a light shade of sky blue. So there you go. Uh, of course, it Changed over to green, probably because of Ireland's nickname, the Emerald Isle. Number seven, in addition to hops, yeast, and water, what additional ingredients ingredient is in Guinness beer? Barley, wheat, rye, none of the above. I'm guessing many of you will get this one correct. The correct answer is indeed barley. There is both roasted and malted barley in Guinness beer. Number eight. What percentage of Americans are of Irish descent? Three, five, ten, or none of the above? I don't know if you're still typing into the chat. Feel free if you want to to compare how you're doing with others. The correct answer is, according to the 2019 U.S. Census, 10%, actually 9.7% uh, of Americans. So at this point, if we were playing the game uh, either in person in our sanctuary, or we've also done this... Um, online for our our online messy church i would be asking all right how many how many points do you have right so go ahead now and and type we're not bragging we're just showing how smart everyone is uh type into the chat how many points you've got out of eight how many uh how many questions you've gotten correct and we have two questions left to finish off this quiz number nine what are the odds of finding a four-leaf clover a, one in a hundred, B, one in a thousand, C, one in a million, D, none of the above. According to the internet, and it has to be right, right, because I found it on the internet, the correct answer is D, none of the above. It's one in 10,000. One in 10,000 will help you find a four-leaf clover, not to be confused with the shamrock, which is the three-leaf clover. All right. And last, but not least, number 10, when was St. Patrick canonized. When was St. Patrick canonized? 5th century CE, 12th century CE, 17th century CE, or none of the above? Type in your chat, A, B, or C. The correct answer is none of the above. Did you know? This was a shock to me. St. Patrick isn't officially a saint. Like He wasn't ever canonized uh, by, by the Pope, by, by the Vatican. So I guess Saint, he's like the honorary saint. Maybe that's, that's what it is, the saint in our heart. So there we go. That was the St. Patrick's Day Messy Church edition. If you want to put into the chat uh, how, you're, how many you got right uh, for bragging rights, that would be great. Otherwise, um, I just wanted to share how... So, so this is what we would do, right? If we were going to be, um, we be doing a Messy Church this weekend... And if it was in person, which we're still not uh, back to in person here in, um, at least in California, uh, we would use this at, at the beginning, right? To have a, a fun way for, for people to connect. And oftentimes it would be families that would sit together and between mom and dad and kids and grandma, they would, you know, go through their, uh, each of the questions and decide what they're going to be. And oftentimes, you know, the family would choose one, but one person would hold out for another one. And when you give the answer, the person that they got the wrong one, they got the answer wrong, but the one who was holding out had it right. And he's like, see, whatever. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. And sometimes uh, kids would get together and 
youth about the same age or two different families. And we just had a great time as a way of bringing people in, getting focused on the theme, and then um, having a chance to, that would lead right into our celebration time with the storytelling, with the prayer, and, and, and with a song. Um, other examples, uh, let me show you one more thing. We did a, we did a messy church with uh, Noah's Ark. And I'm going to switch over here to this now. See, okay, let's see if you can see. So we did a, a thing on Noah's Ark, and and I started the the game by playing Who Lives Here. And so I had a number of animal uh, habitats. Uh, for example, Who Lives Here: alligators, crocodiles, or sharks. And Who Lives Here: aardvarks, beavers, or crickets. Who Lives Here: a bristly rose slug, a caddisfly larvae, a sweet potato hornworm. Uh, who lives here? Uh, weaver ants, stick grasshoppers, or sack spiders. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. And just the idea was to begin to get the kids and families and adults to be thinking about um, where different animals lived. And then that uh, led into the story uh, of Noah's Ark. And then we moved, of course, on to our games and our crafts and our dinner. And it was we just had a fabulous time. So they're really easy to do. Um, if you would like me to send you, to email you um, the sample, the St. Patrick's Day, and you can use that as a template, and then just change out the pictures and change out the questions, I'm happy to do that. Go ahead and put your email address uh, in the chat, and we'll, we'll make sure that we get that, uh, get that out to you after we're done. Uh, but whatever the theme might be, um, or the season of the year, right? So in the fall, we did something around Halloween and traditions around Halloween. So sometimes it's connected to the particular Bible story or theme that we're doing. And sometimes it's connected to, we did a back to school uh, one in, in the fall um, and just different um, facts uh, that you can find on the internet about um, school supplies and whatever. Um, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to put together. I think I can usually with research and um putting in the PowerPoint things under two hours, hour to hour and a half, depending on how uh, how much research you have to do for a different topic. And um, it just is a lot of fun. We, we have a great time with it. And um, we often will do it at the, at the very beginning of each of our messy churches. And it, it can take about 15 or 20 minutes um, if you go through it quickly. And you don't have to have the 10 questions, of course. You could just do, you know, five or six if you want. Um, but basically, that's it. That's... That's how we do it. We found that it's uh, really engaging to people. They seem to have a lot of fun. And uh, I'm grateful for uh, the chance to be able to share this. Uh, so questions. Uh, anything that you want to know about this? Uh, insights. I have a little bit of extra time. I'm switching back now to looking at the, um, um, the chats. And see if there's anything else. Oh, and thanks, thanks to Sandy who helped me get set up on how to uh, uh, to use the OBS software in order to to share this as well. Um, oh yeah, Aardvarks quiz. I don't think there are any Aardvarks, Lucy, in my. Uh, but if you have a passion about something, you can work that into the uh, into the into the quiz at, at all as well. Anything else? No questions on the chat. That's okay. We'll keep it short and sweet. We all got things that we can be doing. Uh, have a wonderful St. Patrick's Day. Why don't I close with a prayer? Send you off on your way, and may you find all kinds of wonderful, creative ways to come up with quizzes that engage your messy participants. Uh, let us pray. God, thank you so much for bringing us here today for this little chunk of time out of the busyness. For some of us, it's the beginning of the day. For some, it's the end. Others, it's smack dab in the middle. We know through it all, you are present with us. And we thank you for uh, your Holy Spirit that's guiding and leading us, especially our messy churches. We pray for all of our families. Um, we haven't been able to gather in person like we've wanted to in the last year. And there's, I know, some trepidation about how to move forward and, and get people back going. But we trust, oh God, that you are alive and at work through the Messy Church movement. And we thank you for 
the wonderful things that you will be doing in and through our messy communities in the weeks and months and years to come. I, pour out, I ask you to pour out your blessing upon all who are watching live or on demand, and we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone. Aloha. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Have a blessed, blessed day. Take care.